Chapter 7, Lesson 2, Essential Question. How can you use a model to show the product of a fraction and a whole number? Investigation. Martin is planting a vegetable garden. Each row is 2 meters long. He wants to plant carrots along 3 fourths of each row. How many meters of each row will he plant with carrots? Press pause, underline what you're being asked to find, and circle the important information. You should have underlined how many meters of each row will he plant with carrots, because that's what you're being told to find, and then circled three-fourths of each row, and then circled two meters, because that's how long each row is. Now, it does tell us um, to use fraction strips, but we are not going to. We are going to go straight to the picture. But our story problem leads us to the multiplication sentence of three-fourths times two. The two is because each row is two meters long, and then three-fourths is because we want three-fourths of each two. Looking at part C right here, they, we're going to draw a picture of the model. So we have one hole here and then another hole here because if you put those together, one and one equals two. And that's the length, this represents the length of each row. And so now we're asked to find three-fourths of this. So what we need to do is we need to draw another rectangle right below here. And then we need to divide this into four pieces. And the reason why we use four is because our denominator up here is four. And so we need to break this into four pieces. And so I'm going to look, and because it's 4 is an even number, I can divide it right in half. So I'm going to divide it just right where the 1 and the 1 come together. And, but that only gives me two pieces. And so now I need to divide each other piece right in half. So I'll just go right here and then right here. So that gives me four pieces. I have 1, 2, 3, 4. And now we need to label the squares that we just created. You might be tempted to label them as one-fourth because they are each one-fourth of two, but now we need to still think of them in terms of just one. So we're only looking at this first half and so of this one piece. So each of these pieces are technically one half of the whole above it. So each of these are one half because we know that one half plus one half gives us a whole, so then this one half and this one half would give us another whole. So if we had four one halves, we would have two, which that's the same thing as like, you have 50 cents, 50 cents, and then 50 cents and 50 cents, that would be two dollars. So that's two holes and each of these are a half. So now, that we have those labeled based on one hole, we need to circle three-fourths of two. So now we're going to look back at the whole piece and we need to circle three of the four that we drew. So there's three of the four. And so how many did we circle? We need to complete our number sentence. So three-fourths times two. Well, we circled three and they're halves, three halves. And that reduces into the mixed number. Well, you can go how many twos are in three? There's one, and then you would have one left over keeping the same denominator. So one and one half. So how much, or so Martin will plant carrots along blank meters of each row. He will plant carrots along one and one half meters of each row. Looking at draw conclusions. Explain why you place four fraction strips or boxes with the same denominator under the two whole strips. So right now they're asking why did we have four with the same bottom number below the two holes? To answer that, we just need to know that we, or I, needed to divide the entire length of blank into blank equal parts. 
fill in the blanks. So we needed to divide the entire length of 2 into 4 equal parts. And we had to do the 4 because 4 was our denominator of our fraction we were multiplying by. So looking at the next one, how would you model 3 tenths of 2? Basically, it'll be the same sentence as above, but just changing the numbers slightly, or even just one of the numbers. Press pause and fill it in. So this one you would need to divide the entire length of 2 by 10 equal parts. Looking at the making connections. Margot was helping clean up after a class party. There were three boxes remaining with pizza in them. Each box had three-eighths of a pizza left. How much pizza was left in all? Underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important information. You should have underlined how much pizza was left in all, circled three boxes, and then with three-eighths of a pizza left. That leads us to three times three-eighths. So we would have three circles with eight pieces, okay? And then we need to place one-eighth of frac a fraction circle piece, which we're just going to shade them in, to represent the amount of pizza that was left in each box. So we need to shade in how much for each pizza. Well, first, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We know that each of these circles has eight even pieces. And so there were three eighths of each left. So one, two, three. Do that for the following two. After you've shaded those in, each circle shows blank eighths of a whole. They show three eighths of a whole because I shaded in three for each. And the three circles all together, how many pieces are shaded? There are nine eighths of the whole actually shaded. So then if we look and we complete our number sentences, we're ending up with an addition problem of three eighths plus three eighths plus three eighths. Um, they all have the same denominator. But right here, we know that repeated addition is the same thing as multiplication. So if we add 3 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths, we end up with 9 eighths. And so 3 times 3 eighths would also be 9 eighths. So how many Margot had blank boxes of pizza left? You could say 9 eighths, but nobody really talks like that when they're talking about pizza. And so you should simplify that. How many eights are there in nine? There are one, and then what would be left over? One, and the denominator stays the same. So nine eights or one and one eighths. If you're having a hard time with the models, it's okay. I'm gonna quickly show you the traditional algorithm. We will work on this tomorrow as well. But for today, let's look at our three eights times three. Now, the best thing to do is actually to take your whole number and rewrite it as a fraction, which is actually super simple to do. All I'm going to do is I'm going to write it a little smaller. So there's my whole number of 3, and then I'm going to just put it over 1, because 3 over 1 is the same thing as just 3. Now, we haven't got to this part yet. This will be a lesson in probably a few days, but when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply straight across. So we're gonna go three times three equals nine. And then eight times one equals eight. Is that the answer that we just got on the previous um, problem? It is and it still reduces down to one and one eighth. So let's try that again with just another um, problem. Let's try it again with our first example problem. Our first example problem was three fourths times two. Now my whole number, I wrote it up a little higher and I'm just gonna put a one under it so that I can make it a fraction. And then I'm gonna multiply straight across. 
Okay, so 3 times 2 equals 6. Fraction bar. 4 times 1 equals 4. Does this reduce? Well, how many 4's are in 6? There's 1, and then what do you get left over? You have 2 left over with the denominator of 4, but 2 4 still reduces to 1 and 1 half. And that's the exact same answer we got for the first problem. So if you're having a hard time with the models, all you need to do is put a 1 under your whole number, make it a fraction, and then multiply straight across. We'll do one more just to practice. Okay, we're going to do 4 fifteenths times 5. Now, remember, I have my whole number. I'm just going to 5 over 1, make it a fraction. And now I'm going to multiply straight across. 4 times 5 equals 20. And 15 times 1 equals 15. Now, that's not its simplest form. I still need to reduce. Um, 20 and 15, well, I know there's one group of 15 and 20. And then that would give me 5 left over. My denominator would stay 15. But 5 and 15 can reduce. So I'll keep my whole number 1. 5 goes into 5 one time. And 5 goes into 15 three times. So my answer would be 1 and 1 third. For your share and show, you have problems 1 and 2, which they ask you to use the model to solve, which they've set it up for you. And then you have numbers 3 through 12. Number 12 is still part of the share and show. Um, go ahead and on number 12, make sure that you solve the problem and then write down the strategy that you used, whether it was um, drawing your model or using the algorithm. Explain how you solved it. Um, I will give the answers for all of them, um, but I will walk through um, four and five, those with the check marks. I will walk through those using both pictures and algorithms. Press pause and you may begin. Right here for number four on the model, I drew, it was nine times one third. So I drew nine circles and I divided them into thirds. And then because it's one third, I shaded in one of each of them. And so I ended up coloring in nine thirds, which reduces to be three because there are three um, groups of three in nine. Now, if I use the algorithm, I would have had 9 over 1 times 1 third, which I would have gotten 9 times 1 is 9, 1 times 3 is 3, and again, it reduces down to 3. Now I'm going to move on to 5 and show you it with a model. This time I chose to use rectangles instead of circles. I could have taken circles and then divided them into fourths and then in half again to be um, make eight in my circle but I just chose to do my rectangles so now that I have four rectangles with each part eight parts in each of them because my denominator is eight I now need to color in seven of each eight I alternated my colors so that you could see that I did seven so then I count them all up seven fourteen twenty one twenty eight so my answer would be 28 eighths, which reduces how many eighths are in 28. Well, there are three, because that's 24, and then four eighths, which reduces to be three and one half. Now, if I use the algorithm, seven eighths times four, making it four over one, I would get 7 times 4 is 28 over 8, reducing again all the way to 3 and a half. You may now work on your other tasks.